Hi everyone. <clears throat> so I'm going to do something different this week for the divine masculine and divine feminine energies. Um, we're going to separate them into two videos. And I'm doing this because I want to do more of a healing video um, or a healing reading for each um, counterpart. Um, and I, and, and the reason why I've decided to do this is because I do twin flame readings all day long. Um, and like when I say that, I literally mean I'm doing like five to six twin flame readings, personal readings every single day. Um, sometimes less, sometimes more, but the majority of the readings that I put out for you guys are the personal readings. Um, are of the twin flame or soulmate divine partnership and there's a lot of healing occurring right now and um, due to all of the personal challenges I've had in the beginning of this year and um, I've had to uh, I'm still catching up on readings because from like I mean I'm not I, I was all the way up to like a week behind which was killing me like I hate being that far behind in personal readings but it's been a process and I've kind of been working in overtime and not taking days off to make sure the readings get out so um, I do appreciate everybody's patience with the personal readings if they are getting to you a couple of days late or you know they shouldn't be a week late anymore um, there were a couple of people thank you very much for your patience that had to wait um, it, um, I'm quickly getting caught up. Um, it seems like every single time I get to that point where I'm almost caught up, something happens and it pulls me back again. Um, I want to remind everybody that I too am on this journey. Uh, I too am in twin flame. I haven't told my personal story because there are other people involved in it that the public do not need to know, like we just don't, I don't want to put everybody out there and in the spotlight. That's my own personal preference. Um, I will say that I know who my twin flame is. I am in, in contact with him. Um, he, and he's one of my best friends. We'll put it this way. Okay. Um, and I'm on this journey too, and it is, I have those days where if I am, have twin flame readings booked all day long, and I'm having a bad day on my journey, which we all go through, and I'm having to be patient with my emotions and myself and my feelings, I don't want to project that into the readings. I don't even like projecting my own feelings into the general readings. <laughs> so when I do a personal reading for a twin flame journey, um, I, if I have to take that day off and not do those, it's really for the benefit of you and the benefit of me as well, because I do have those days where I need to heal myself. Um, but more than anything, I don't want to project any of my journey onto you guys. So please, please, please understand. Um, because I do get emails from people who are like, you know, I don't understand what happened to my reading. Why did I get my reading today? Um, it's because I too have things that will come up in my life and in this journey. And I would rather give you a, the best reading I possibly can. I am all about quality and not quantity. And I've really been doing my best to make sure that my quantity is like over, you know, abundant these days. Um, but um, if you ever um, feel like you need to email me and ask me where your reading is, I don't mind. I don't mind. But please try not to project any um, ill will feelings towards me. Um, because I too, you know, just try and understand that, that I am on this journey as well. This is not something um, to take lightly. I do not take your journey lightly, so please don't take mine lightly. Um, this isn't a game to me. I'm not like out here to pretend that everything's going to be happy and fantastic and wonderful and there are flowers and roses and butterflies every single day. Like that doesn't happen. So um, that's not reality, right? So 
Um, I will do my best not to project onto you if you do not project onto me. And I'm not saying that, it, like, this is not for to get, like, any kind of, like, you know, don't worry about what other people say. It is a service that I am providing. Um, you pay me for that service. And I feel like you deserve the best quality for that reading end of that, right? Okay. So, in saying that... Um, thank you for everybody's patience with this. Thank you for the patience with the general reading as well. Um, for those people who are going through a healing process right now, I want you to know, um, because a lot of people have, a lot of divine feminines um, have had to step back. Force, like they're being forced to step back, either because there's been a separation, a breakup, there's no communication, what have you. Um, but there's not a reason to stop living. And by that, I don't mean like like physically taking your life. That like That's not what I'm talking about. Um, what I'm talking about is falling into a deep depression because you've had to, you've had the separation or you've had to stop talking to your twin. Or you, you know, there, or your divine masculine, or your life part, you know, your soulmate. There are reasons why um, we have to take a step back, a step back in this journey. And the biggest part is healing. And if you have to go through the dark night of the soul, make sure that you have people with you. Make sure you have a support system around you. Um, because really there are, a, I mean, the majority of the readings that I've had to do lately are really talking about needing to nurture yourself and master yourself. And it is more divine feminines that come to me for readings because we are out here searching for answers and looking for clues and answers on what do I do and when and how. And, um, I don't do timelines anymore. And I explain this in all of my readings. Um, I don't do timelines because we have a soul contract with our divine partner. We also have individual soul contracts. We have soul contracts with other people in our lives. And we all have free will. There are so many variables to this journey that I have accurately predicted people becoming coming into union with each other. But they have not fully healed and so they separate again. And then they come to me and the divine feminine will say, what happened? And I'll have to say, I don't know what happened. Did you heal? Did you take the steps? Did you learn your lessons? Did he heal? Did he take the steps? Did he, or did you just come back into it saying, oh, everything is exactly the way as it was before. I'm so happy. Nothing has changed. It's like we never parted. It needs to be like you parted. It needs to be like you were separated. You both have to grow and go through that evolution process. Nobody is the same person. After finding out who your twin is, after that realization and going through that change process and having to really evolve your soul and your spirit, um, you will not be the same person. You'll be better. You'll be better for it. And when we try and make things as they were before, that's like trying to turn back time. And time is an illusion. There are some twin flames that will not be together in this lifetime. And you may have had to meet your twin flame so that you can evolve in some way or your soul can evolve and, and move to the next level, the next spiritual level in your journey. Um, some twin flames will be together. The, the biggest way for you to decide or the biggest way for you to come into union with each other is for you to personally, and I'm talking to the divine feminines and the divine masculines that are watching for their divine feminines, um, for you to personally heal. Master yourself. Focus on your spiritual journey. Know that you not only have a big place in this world with another person, but you also have a big place in this world with yourself. Like that is the biggest, you know, the reason why, what is the purpose of living? It is to learn our lessons. 
It is to grow. It is to evolve. It is to be, um, to learn how to unconditionally love yourself and master your journey. Okay. Okay. So if somebody wants to timestamp that, I know a lot of people don't like it when I chatterbox for 10 minutes. Sorry. <laughs> um, I don't, I do not get offended by timestamps. So if somebody wants to timestamp the reading, that's great. Let's see. What is it that the divine feminine is working on this week? Um, May 21st to the 27th. May 21st to the 27th, what is the Divine Feminine working on healing? Oh, there it is. Whoa, maybe there's two of them. Hold on one second. I need to get, like, <laughs> blockers right here. That's been happening to me a lot lately. Spirit's like, no, take this card. Okay, sorry. We all know I have a blankie. So we have change your focus. You see that? Which is the five of cups and manifest. So in the traditional tarot, the five of cups talks about, and manifest is the magician in the traditional tarot. The five of cups talks about regret. It talks about um, things that we've lost that we're mourning. It talks about um, the things that we're dwelling on that we've lost instead of Focusing on the stuff that we still have. And the easiest way to manifest something in your life for your highest good, and because remember, when we manifest things, the universe will give us what we are manifesting if it is within our highest good, okay? Um, if you're trying to manifest your twin flame union right now and it's not in your highest good to have it right now, you'll possibly get it down the road, but the universe is going to bring you through lessons to get to that manifestation point, right? So let's focus on what we do have. And the easiest way to manifest things is to be grateful for what you do have today. And grateful for, um, know that you're already abundant. You know, I say things like, I am loved. I am already loved. I am already abundant. I have everything that I need. Um, I was actually told this last weekend, um, I went to this expo um, here in Nashville, and um, this last weekend I did one of those aura cameras, and the intuitive that was reading my aura actually told me that I have very high manifestation qualities because my aura is very equal. Of course, I had like all the white light above me, but it was, it was all yellow around me, um, and it was, it was a lot of equal yellow and a lot of orange. So um, she said, you know, you have a very high manifestation, and, it's, and I think it's really because even though, yes, I am human, I worry about things, I worry about my life, I worry about the way di the direction is going to go. Sorry, the focus, I did not realize the focus was so bad. Sorry about that. Um, I even got my new little Buddha guy at the expo. I like to rub his belly. He's really cute. He's a laughing Buddha. Check him out. I love him. He made me laugh. I was like instantly drawn to this dude. So now he's my little friend who's going to sit here. Um, so when we are very grateful for what we have in the now, um, we can manifest other things. And, we, and when you feel what it's like, like if you say, if you think about, you know, I want to have this really great house and this loving marriage and with this person, if you sit and you think about that, and you sit in the feelings of not longing for it, but actually sitting in it and feeling what it would feel like to be in that moment, sit there for three, five, ten minutes. If you can do that and you can feel that without having that longing and desiring, because the longing and desiring is a lower vibration. But if you can sit in that feeling of, I know that this is the way that this is going to feel and you can put that energy out there, that's how we manifest things. That's how we are able to have the abundance in our life. Okay? So, what is the Divine Feminine doing this week to change her focus and to manifest things? Interesting. Five of Swords. 
So fives are about conflict. The five of swords is about deception. This could be um, you're kind of deceiving yourself that you can't change your focus. You're deceiving yourself that you do not have these manifestation qualities. You're deceiving yourself that um, you're not a good manifester. So it's really time to get out of that. I feel like that is a very healing thing that the Divine Feminine has to go through right now and to understand that um, we can. We can change our focus anytime. And people, people will say to me, but how do I cut off the energy cord? How do I cut that? It's not, it's not a cutting of the energy cord. That's not, what it, that's not what I mean by change your focus. I mean actually use your mind and retrain it to not think about what you don't have, but think about what you already have and that you are actually very abundant. You know, because a lot of people are like, I don't have my divine masculine. What, what is my life purpose without my, my divine masculine? Well, we all have a separate life purpose, right? And then we have the Knight of Cups. To me, the Knight of Cups, especially in a healing reading, is all about giving oneself love. And knowing that you deserve to have that love. And knowing that you um, can have this love regardless. Four of Swords. I love the Four of Swords in this deck. Because this deck really, it has so many details in it. If you look at the guy, the Four of Swords is about retreating and meditating and healing, right? If you look at this guy, he's surrounded by these swords and there are ties on each of them. And he looks very uncomfortable. And I feel like for him to actually get comfortable in this meditation and this healing process, he needs to cut ties with the ideas of the way things used, to, the way things, the way think, the way he think things should be, the way he thinks things should be. Sorry, very tongue tied. Um, and instead of um, being uncomfortable. Put himself in a more comfortable spot. So when we stop thinking, well, this is the way that it should be, or this is the way that I want it to be, we don't, because, you know, swords are thoughts. We don't have, this is how you, when you retrain your brain to manifest things, retraining your brain to manifest things. So let's see, I even have my healing tree of life yoga t-shirt on for everybody there. You know, a little bit of healing. We all need some healing today. Um, I think this Uranus transit is actually being, it's pretty tough on some people. I'm really feeling it. Um, I felt it very physically. Today I've had more energy than I have had in like the last week. And, and it's not that I'm, like, dragging or anything like that. It's just I didn't have that get up and go. And, man, I had the get up and go this morning, and I was like, all right, let's do this. Let's get this done today. Um, but, you know, a lot of things have changed already in my environment. Um, things that I've had to, like, physically remove myself from or walk away from because I knew that there was something really big out there for me, right? And that's kind of what I'm feeling is happening with a lot of people right now. Um, I just want to let everybody know that I am relating to the feelings that everybody is having and the shift that is going on. So then we have the Ten of Cups. So once we actually retrain our brain, we can get to this Ten of Cups abundance and no longer feel like we're deceiving ourselves, you know? And if, because when you believe that you can have all of this and you sit in this feeling, that's when all of the abundance becomes real. Nine of Wands. So what's blocking? 
Nine of Wands is, to me, this is a blockage. So the Divine Feminine, in order for us to heal this week, in order for the Divine Feminine to heal this week, really need to open yourself up to the possibilities of abundance in your future. And I feel like that there's, there's this need to retreat. There's this need to back up. And um, I've, I have said this in many, many personal readings lately, that recognizing that doing the same thing over and over and over again um, is not going to give you a different result. And, and it's the same with the thought process. If you don't change your focus and you don't start to focus on your healing progress, um, nothing will change. Nothing will change. So, let's see. Five of Swords. I want to clarify what this Five of Swords is. What is the Divine Feminine deceiving herself? Ah, she cannot be patient. It's time to, it's temperance. It's time to balance out your heart and your mind. Don't just think about what your heart needs. Think about what your mind needs too. And vice versa. So the blockage. What is the blockage? This nine of wands. The balance. More balance needed. Um, justice is blocking. Justice is the blockage. You want to have that balance, but there are some karmic lessons that need to be done. Um, and when we do not fully understand what karmic lessons we are here to learn, it's really hard to unblock ourselves. It's really hard to unblock ourselves. So, <clears throat> I feel like This week, Two of Swords, Nine of Swords, and the Nine of Pentacles. And then we have the King of Wands. If you are worried about being alone, you don't need to worry because we have the King of Wands and we have the King of Pentacles. Interesting. So there are two kings here. Um, could be two separate parts of your Divine Masculine, one who is very focused on the 3D world, one who is being very passionate. I feel like the Divine Masculine is very driven this week, very driven to focus on his reality and his 3D. But I'll get into that reading for them. Um, I'll be doing that as, as well. So, But I feel like with the Divine Feminine, if you're scared that you're going to be alone on this journey, you're not alone on this journey. Um, and I also feel like the healing that the Divine Feminine is going through is that they aren't alone on this journey. That there really is an abundance to the process that's happening here. And um, to not be in denial of that. And to not deceive yourself that you can, you, you can be balanced within this journey. Um, and you're not alone. If you are separated from your Divine Masculine and you're feeling alone, I feel like you really need to connect to other people. Um, support system is a really big deal, especially if you are going through your spiritual awakening process. Um, reach out to your friends and your loved ones. Because I feel like that could possibly be something that the Divine Feminine truly, truly needs right now. Is to not feel so alone in this process. All of these cards down here, um, except for the Ten of Cups, only has one person in them. The Ten of Cups is the only one that has more than one person. And this is the abundance that we're trying to manifest. This is the full happiness we're trying to manifest. So to me, this is saying it's really time to connect with other people. Give yourself a lot of love this week. A lot of love. 
and I truly, truly hope everybody's doing well. Um, if you would like to have a personal reading, again, I am catching up very quickly on personal readings. Um, right now, I um, am doing, um, trying to limit my readings, or I'm trying to, um, I'm, I'm scheduling them two and a half weeks out. Um, and the reason why I'm doing that is because of the personal things that are still going on um, with my family. And uh, I, of course, don't want to overdo the energies. Now, if I schedule two and a half weeks out and I can get to it earlier, I certainly will. Um, but right now, two and a half weeks. And for the people that have been very patient and had to wait three weeks for their readings, thank you so much for your patience. I really, really appreciate that. Um, you have no idea how much that means to me that you guys have been very patient with me um, and that you have trusted me and in, in waiting for this. So um, fearlessintuition.net, go check out the readings. The May special is the soul's journey. We look at three lessons that your soul is going through right now and how to navigate them. That is on special through May. Also, the FaceTime readings are on special. And... Um, yeah, I hope you guys are all doing really, really well, and um, please let me know if you need anything, and uh, yeah, have a wonderful week. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.